welcome to the Ontario Science Centre, where we are inaugurating our latest exhibition, Wildlife Rescue. This is about how we need to learn how to share our habitat with many, many animal species. And sometimes these animals need our help to be nursed back to health. Baby elephants that are orphaned when poachers kill their parents uh, need humans to uh, raise them. Uh, the same thing with orangutans and other species. But we don't need to go to Africa to be able to help animal species do better. There are species in our own backyard that, that are under threat. Uh, bees, bats, all have been subject to diseases that affect them and we can do something to help those species uh, do better in our environment. So welcome to the Wildlife Rescue Exhibition at the Ontario Science Centre. Really excited to bring this here for the summer. It'll be here till Labor Day and it's a really interesting exhibit. It talks about the topic of wildlife rescue from the approach of scientists and activists. And it looks at the topic in, from three different perspectives. One is from the approach of captive breeding programs. So scientists have to enact captive breeding programs when the number of a particular species is so low that we actually have to take desperate measures, we have to breed the animals in captivity and then release them into the wild. We want to talk about the lake sturgeon fish. Uh, this fish um, basically contains, has fish eggs and how you get them out is basically you pat its back like this. Uh, the fish eggs, um, it's like a food, right? They eat it with like crackers or something um, and the fish eggs basically um, they have their own, like they have their own like flavor and like when you put it in your mouth it's like a burst of flavor right that like nothing else can really compare to and it's just tasty and it's amazing um it says the lake sturgeon right is one of the largest freshwater fish in north america it can weigh nearly 90 kilograms and live for more than 100 years. The fish was over harvested, that's why it became um, endangered, so now they're trying to save it. So they catch the fish, they use the, um, they take, they take the fish eggs, and then they put it back into the lake or the ocean where they found it, so it can grow and become, like, the, the species can become more, so it won't become endangered. So a number of different species are profiled in this section. We're looking at lake sturgeon, we're looking at pandas, so today is Chinese New Year and we wanted to have a little bit of fun with our wonderful guests from China, our two giant pandas, Damao and Urshan. So we also wanted to do something special for the two Chinese panda keepers that are visiting from China. So we decided to do some kind of traditional Chinese decorations and hang them in the, chi the giant panda exhibits. So we have some big um, Chinese lanterns, wonderful signs that say Chinese Happy New Year and uh, the pandas just had a great time tearing everything up and eating their treats inside. We're looking at black-footed ferrets, which in 1981 were down to a really tiny population of animals in the United States, but their normal habitat range is in the prairies from the States all the way up through to Canada. So at the Toronto Zoo, they're doing a, a black-footed ferret uh, breeding program and releasing those ferrets back to their native habitat in Saskatchewan. All right, so in this section of the Wildlife Rescue Exhibition at the Ontario Science Centre, we're looking at uh, orphaned animal rescue. Two species in particular, the orangutan and the African elephant. So in these situations, uh, people have put these animals into an orphan situation. The baby elephants, for instance, uh, are no longer have their parents. So some very dedicated volunteers have opened up a shelter to raise the baby elephants to an age where they can be reintroduced into another social elephant group and they're very social species. Uh, and then those elephants are all reintroduced into a habitat preserve. I really like uh, if you're tired of walking around and just need to take a little load off, you can still just sit down and watch a movie about uh, perhaps the orphanages for orangutans and elephants. And I really like um, how you can see the personality of all these different animals and why it's so uh, important to, to save them. 
As for the orangutans, their habitat is decreasing because uh, forests are being destroyed to plant palm oil plantations. Uh, so here we have some orphaned orangutans who uh, are again without their parents. They are raised by volunteers. They have to break their bonds, unfortunately, with their wonderful caregivers and go back to the wild. But again, volunteers are helping to preserve their habitats, reduce the spread of agriculture, and to keep those jungles uh, preserved for the baby orangutans. I would say it's important for uh, people our age to be seeing these exhibits, um, just so we kind of have more of an understanding of the animals in the world and how they live and how uh, the way our civilizations can have an impact on how they live. So in this section of the Wildlife Rescue Exhibition at the Ontario Science Centre, we're looking at acute wildlife care. What can veterinarians do for wild animals which have been injured? And usually these animals are injured because they've come in contact with humans. So we look at the issue of how to clean a bird which has unfortunately been in contact with an oil spill, how to uh, do veterinary care care on animals that have been hit by cars, whether they're mammals, whether they're amphibians, turtles in particular, uh, because they are slow moving and because uh, roads are often in uh, their breeding areas. They're often hit by cars, so how do we fix their turtle shells effectively? Uh, and how do we learn about those animals and their habits so that we can uh, look at our own habits and try and avoid being in contact with those animals. When visitors are leaving the Wildlife Rescue Exhibition at the Ontario Science Centre, they have an opportunity to think about how they can get involved in the cause of helping wildlife. And it doesn't have to be direct, hands-on, I'm going to go out and save this particular species. It's more a chance to examine how we live our daily lives and how our habits affect animals in the wild. So how do I travel? during the day. Do I travel in a way that generates pollution or maybe could I ride my bike from time to time? Uh, when I go to the grocery store, should I be buying food with less packaging? Yeah, that's a good idea because less packaging means we have to manufacture less packaging and we also have less to throw out and we often find that uh, wildlife when they're in uh, environments with a lot of garbage can get into trouble that way. What I learned from this um exhibition is that the animals like a lot of animals are um, dying in a young age and not getting to live their whole entire life which inspires me to help those animals to um, maybe give some donations to wildlife reserves and um, help those animals out by giving them a longer life. Uh, what can I do to get involved? Lots of different options are uh, displayed here and we also want people to focus on nature appreciation and understand how biodiversity uh, is not just a word, it's something that's around us every day. In Toronto, we are in a big city, it's really easy to feel separate from nature. But we hope that once people have gone through this exhibition, that they'll take the chance this summer to explore our parks and explore uh, nature in the province of Ontario uh, and get a better sense of how we really are all connected. My favorite thing about this exhibit is how they've introduced sort of a quiz style to it in which it asks the audience like what they think the answer is and you try and solve things for yourself before finding out what the real answer is. And it really helps to really show you like how little you know and how much more there is to find out about all of these animals and creatures and what you can do about it. So at the exit from the Wildlife Rescue Exhibition at the Ontario Science Centre, 
we have our call to action. What can visitors do today to help the cause of promoting good habitats for wildlife to live in? So we have a number of options here and visitors can look at the options and then choose which ones that they think that they would be able to enact in their own daily lives. So for example, uh, planting native trees in your backyard or your community. Why do we want to plant native species? Because these are the plant species that the local animals, insects, birds, amphibians, mammals, these are the species that those animals can actually use for food and shelter and so on. Invasive species, species from other countries, these are not things that our local animals can use. What about pledging to buy things with less packaging? I could do that. I can just buy my bananas. I don't have to put my bananas in a plastic bag. So I'm going to pledge to buy things with less packaging. I picked this one right here. Uh, this is what something I would do to, you know, save the world. Um, so this one says um, you will buy products with less packaging. So. I actually did like a presentation on um, like buying products with less packaging and stuff. Um, uh, and it's 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 good to it's good to like buy packages with less um, like uh, packaging and stuff um, because it's more eco-friendly, right? So, for example, if you get a sandwich for lunch, right? Uh, you know, with a with a bag, right? Um, you eat the sandwich, that you can eat, right? You can't throw it in the garbage, well, if you want to, I don't know why you would do that. But you take the, you take the uh, package, um, what it came in, and you throw it in the garbage, right? So why not just, you know, get an apple, right? In no packaging, nothing really. And uh, um, uh, products, um, like in plastics and stuff. So like plastics aren't good for you, right? And most most things, use, um, reusable things that you buy are made out of plastic. And plastic has many chemicals like BPA, right? Bisphenol A. And, um, it, 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 and plastic can even cause cancer. So it's not good for your health. And you should kind of stay away from plastics in general, right? Just um, uh, buy like a, a steel, uh, steel water bottle. You know, you can reuse it. Um, uh, and you know, and also if a uh, cool fact is if you leave plastic water bottles in the sun for too long or at heat for too long, um, the chemicals from the plastic will, actu will actually seep into the water in the plastic water bottle and the chemicals will come and then when you drink it, um, it's, it's like a no-no and you don't want those chemicals going inside your body and harming you. You could help international organizations that support endangered species. I will support international organizations that are helping endangered animals. I will choose this button because we need animals in our day-to-day -day life to survive. Without animals, we can't. Um, our basic needs can just not happen. For example, we need bees to pollinate our flowers to keep the flowers like healthy and to make sure the flowers don't die. Plus, to make honey so we can have honey nut cereals and to sweeten our coffee or anything like that. We also need bats, for example, to eat up to eat the to eat the bugs, so we don't have to use pesticides to on our like on our food on meat or in vegetables and without pesticides then we won't get sick from it or the, like if the if it's really raining then the water won't like flood the pesticides and so we really need animals to survive so that's why I will push this button I study bat populations living in cities and so we're trying to figure out how species like these guys, these are big brown bats, they live here in the city of Toronto, we're trying to figure out how uh, they change their behavior in city landscapes. So where do they go at night to feed, where do they go during the day to sleep or to roost and how do these patterns differ from what they do in their natural habitats. And understanding where bats are in cities is really important because a lot of these species are under threat from things like white nose syndrome which is a fungus that infects them when they're hibernating them to wake up and not make it through the winter um, and so it's important that we understand their behavior in both city and natural landscapes so that we can uh, preserve their populations and protect them. And there are 1,300 or 13 
uh, 100 species of bats globally. They account for 25% of all mammalian diversity. We find different types of bats everywhere except the Antarctic and High Arctic, so they're very, very widely distributed. Uh, they eat lots of different things, insects, uh, fruit, nectar, pollen, all sorts of different things. Um, and because of that, they do a lot of really good things for us as humans. You know, the ones that eat insects are like free pest control. The ones that feed on fruit disperse seeds in tropical landscapes. Uh, the ones that feed on nectar pollinate plants. So they're very, very important for us as humans. So some of the ways that we can help our, our local species of bats are, are by doing things like putting up one of these really nifty, this is a bat house, um, so you can put one of these up on a tree or a house on your property. The bats will fly up underneath and they'll roost or sleep during there during the day, so this creates habitat for them in our cities. Um, you could also go to a place like the High Park Nature Center and kind of sign out one of these handheld acoustic detectors. These detectors help us to hear the echolocation calls of bats that we normally can't hear. Um, and you can take this anywhere in the city. You can collect information on the types of, of species that you're hearing and you can share that information with the folks at the Nature Center who share it with us as bat scientists to help us understand where our bats are located and where they aren't located. You could get involved in community cleanup. I think this is something that we could do every day. Pick up those tin cans that have ended up on your front lawn. Don't throw away your Tim Hortons cup on the ground. Make sure you find a garbage can to put it in. And when we're talking about waste, make sure that you sort it correctly. You don't want to get food waste in with your recycling because then the recycling efforts are wasted. They can't actually recycle those items if they're contaminated with food, so they just go in a landfill. Not great for the environment. There's a lot of ideas here on how you can get involved, how you can help animals and like this planet. And the one I would choose or the one that I think I could do best is to reduce waste or, uh, by composting and recycling. And um, I think this would be like a really good thing to do because you can do this like at your home. You can do it in like everyday life. You know, there's like a lot of ways you can do this at home. And uh, I think that's why this is a good choice. So I just, I pressed it and I think I will be able to do this one to help the animals in this planet. And let's think about how we travel in the city. Uh, for short trips, we could absolutely ride our bicycles or take a walk instead of getting in our cars and contributing to air pollution in our city. So there are lots of things that visitors can try and can take to heart uh, to help promote the cause of keeping our animals uh, surviving and thriving in the environment. This exhibit's important for us to learn because then it shows uh, students and everything more about the animals and everything that live around us compared to in our bio classes and everything. You don't really get to go up and learn all of this important information about them. So at the Ontario Science Centre we strive to design and bring exhibitions that speak about an important issue for society and learning how to share the planet with the many species of animals that exist is one of them. That's why we uh, rented this exhibition from Science North in Sudbury and brought it here to the Ontario Science Centre to spark a conversation about uh, wildlife rescue, animal conservation and learning to share our planet, our habitat with the many species of animals that also call it home. Come to the Ontario Science Centre to see wildlife rescue.